After being the great house to lose the most territory in the first three succession wars, fate was not kind to House Liao in the upcoming fourth succession war, as many people know. Even until the current Ill Clan era, the Capellan Confederation never achieved the territorial heights of the Star League. However, they would form into one of the toughest cultures and nations to contend with in the Inner Sphere, and even seemingly beaten, they always rise again to strike at their enemies when least expected. Hans Devion promised his bride at their wedding the Capellan Confederation, and he tore away about half of it. The devastation that the Capella Confederation armed forces suffered here should have ended the superstate as any serious threat to the other great houses. That the CCAF should have been in any position to strike back and reclaim the losses of the Fourth Succession War speaks volumes to the tenacity of the Confederation and its people. However, with the loss of the Corward Industrial Systems and the loss of Chancellor Maximilian Liao taking his own life after the full scale of the disaster was made plain to all in the Inner Sphere, the new Chancellor, Maximilian's daughter Romano, with her nation desperate to survive, forms an alliance with the non-federated Commonwealth powers of the Inner Sphere to restore the Superstate to a level of stability that the nation can crawl up from. With Romano Liao firmly at the head of the Chancellorship of the Confederation, Romano's early victories against the invading Andurian and Canopian invasions helped bring back some of the morale and hope within the CCAF, resulting in their taking a not-one-step-back policy. Thankfully for the Chancellor and the survival of the state in general, the CCAF, with renewed purpose, reversed the slow, advancing tides of the Federated Commonwealth and FWL proxy forces poking at their borders. After the War of 3039 showed the weakness of the Federated Commonwealth Alliance, House Liao found themselves setting up a triple alliance between themselves, their former enemies in Canopus, and the Torians, making the Federated Commonwealth leadership think twice before attacking the Confederation again. The clan invasion would help the Capellans in many ways, destroying much of the Federated Commonwealth armed forces as well as introducing a new golden age of technology, one that the Confederation takes full advantage of. Later on, as the threat of the clans becomes more tangible for the rest of the Inner Sphere, a certain conference is called to vote on a certain course of action. Through some clever politicking, Sun Tzu Liao is able to achieve the dream of every Chancellor since the start of the First Succession War. He was elected First Lord of the Star League. Making good use of that title in the growing civil war within the Federated Commonwealth, he would retake planets lost to the Confederation, while the rest of the League was busy doing Operation Serpent, Bulldog, and Crushing Smoke Jaguar into the past tense. Going into the FedCom Civil War, the CCAF uses its characteristic adaptability and capitalizes on the weakness of the Federated Commonwealth and takes back much of the lost territory over the last 40 years. The territory they didn't seize back when Sun Tzu Liao, however, was First Lord of the Star League. Knowing how their member factions in the League would see their immediate fortuity and their lower ranks would balk at their own leadership doing nothing about it, it shouldn't be surprising that the next election, instead of a second term, which would be an unlikely outcome, Theodore Curita was the benefactor of the House Lord's immediate politicking, becoming the second First Lord of the Star League. All was not lost for House Liao, however. Even with the Free Worlds League dissolving their marriage alliance with Sun Tzu, he was able to find a new bride, one better to his liking. That woman was Naomi Centrella, the then recently made Magistrix. Having already had one of his children with her out of wedlock, the marriage was an easy choice for the two, and greatly increased the potential power of both the Confederation and the Magistracy overnight. As the Chaos March expanded and the Blakists seemingly attacked everything and everyone in sight, the Capellans in their newly reconquered territory were prime targets for the Jihad. They are a faction that suffers greatly from the word of Blake. However, as time goes on, they do reverse all losses to the Blakists, with the eventual help of a begrudging Delvin Stone and his coalition. As time goes on, the CCAF having access to clan technology and their trademark adaptability makes them become one of the most deadly fighting forces in the Inner Sphere. When the Republic of the Sphere enters the scene, House Liao having never agreed to its creation, let alone agreeing to seed planets, not to mention personal dislike given how long it took for Stone to help the Confederation, they naturally became the Republic's chiefest enemy outside of the clans. In the Dark Age, House Liao finds themselves fighting against the Republic of the Sphere and their age-old enemies in House Davion, especially Caleb Davion personally. 
his attacks on certain persons of the Confederation demand retribution. And while Caleb would eventually meet justice at the foot of a mech, matters against the Federated Sons would cool when Julian stabilizes the border and brings terms that end the immediate fighting. While this leaves no one satisfied, it does stop the immediate fighting so that superstates can focus on other more pressing matters that have developed. And while not running roughshod over Davion, when the clans break the Fortress Republic, the CCAF rush to occupy as many planets as they can get away with. House Liao throughout the whole era finds themselves in a position of strength. If not the whole era, at least a majority of it. Their marriage alliance with House Centrella allows them access to even greater resources and industrial power, not to mention having the Canopians on their side as a huge manpower and industrial pool in the Confederation's favor. However, whether the Canopians are happy with this arrangement seems to be irrelevant to the new Chancellor, Dao Shen Liao. Entering into the Ill Clan era, House Liao, now Liao Centrella, are now some of the strongest Inner Sphere House Lords the largest army and the most intact realm, but there are splinters forming at the borders. The bindings that hold the disparate pieces of the state loosen, and wolves are at the door. House Liao Centrella will almost certainly face a reckoning in the coming future. Just as grace and good luck saved them in the immediate fourth war, fate has seemingly turned against them in the form of the new First Lord, a clan First Lord, Alaric Ward. Needing a head to hang on his trophy wall, and the strongest house lord on the block would make a fine trophy. Not to mention the brewing civil war with Canopius and Endurian, their citizens always ungrateful for the alliance with the Confederation and what it means to be the ruling body of a unified state. As the Canopians protest and blunder into civil war, the Duke of Endurian is actively promoting it. More shrewd in his motivations than the mob, and mounting a seemingly perfect strike on the flank of the Confederation, only time will tell if the heavens are still with the Chancellor, or if the Confederation has reached its apex and will only begin a slow descent into hell. Thank you all for uh, watching this video. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure to go back and sort of correct, I think, my, my weakest video. Um, but again, thank you all for uh, coming in and seeing it. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you all again, and y'all have a good one.